appointment? No. Then I'm afraid it's quite impossible. No, it isn't. It's quite possible. You hear that I'm giving a party tonight? Oh, I sure have. I'd like you to attend. It's time you met some of my neighbours. Dearest hasn't been asked. I should she'd be too busy to come anyway. No, she wouldn't. Dawson, why does she have to sit down there all alone while Grandfather's just as lonely up here? My lord, Mr. Havisham is here. He wishes to speak to you, Roger. Does he, my dear? What the devil does he want? Uh, show him to the library. I'll see him there. I had a visitor at my chambers today. She brought me a tale of your lordship's eldest son, the late Lord Fauntleroy. Darcy, I thought we'd heard the worst of that. More debts to pay? Worse than that, my lord. It seems that while Lord Fauntleroy was living in Paris some years ago, he contracted a marriage. A marriage? What marriage? To a Frenchman? To an American. She has a child. A boy of 11 years old. But if she and Darcy have a son, then... Precisely. Her child, Darcy Errol, is now Lord Fauntleroy. He would have filled my place better than I have filled it. I know that. He would have honoured the name. <laughs> Checked your marriage certificate. And? And it seems to be genuine. That's because it is genuine. We're continuing our investigations as regards your son. Now look here, Havisham. Lady Fauntleroy. Oh. So you grant me that. Now, what I want to know is when we should go down to Doring Court. I'll need a little money, as I have some things to buy. But I guess I could be ready in a couple of days. How's the Earl fixed? Lady Fauntleroy, you must understand that all this has come as a great surprise to his lordship. I'm sure that in the fullness of time he will be glad to receive your son, but just now he's fond of his grandson, Cedric. And it might be difficult. Difficult fiddlesticks. I know all about little Cedric. I know about his mother, too, waiting to see her own child when she has permission. Well, he may as well get it into his head that he ain't going to treat me that way. If he tries, I'll make him the laughing stock of the county. Now, you just get on to his lordship, and you tell him we're coming to call. By the way, who gets to tell her? I will be writing to Mrs. Errol today. Boy, is she in for a shock when she opens her mail. Of course, we don't know yet quite what it'll mean, but at all events, I thought you should hear at once how things are. I don't want to force you to join us on our travels, if travels they must be. Go on, would you, ma'am? As if I'd go anywhere else. I can't believe it. Why did it take so long for her to turn up? Are you sure there's no mistake? I'm afraid not. Mr. Havisham wouldn't have written unless you were quite sure. <laughs> I think it a terrible thing. I do, really. <laughs> oh, Mary. <laughs> I can't help feeling there are worse tragedies in life than not being an English peer. As for the fortune, 12 months ago, we had no thoughts of it. We'll manage. You'll see. <laughs> Mr. Morton. Bim and God have broke my heart. That's what's happened. I am the heart of that old misery up at the castle at the bound. Well, he caused enough pain in his time. It's his turn now. Well, this is a sad day. Oh, please, Mr. Mordant. Let's not be quite so downhearted as that. I mean, Cedric's prospects have changed. It's true, but he's still the grandson of an earl. And an earl who loves him. We're certainly a great deal better off than we were this time last year. Of course, you're right. Cedric will do well enough. No doubt his grandfather will get him into the army or the navy. Or the church. Or the church. But it was not just a Cedric that I was thinking. Because of the villagers and the tenants. There have been great changes here. Lord Dorincourt has carried out improvements that have been left undone for 50 years. Is it likely that this Yankee brat will carry on his work? Or that the Earl will let him? I think you forget that Cedric's a Yankee too, Mr Mordaunt. Or at any rate, I am. And as for this new child's influence on Lord Dorincourt, we'll just have to wait and see. <clears throat> you sent for us, Sir Roger. Farnsworth, and you, Mrs. Mellon. I assume that you know my news. 
I dare say that it has kept the servants' hall entertained. Not entertained, my lord. But yes, we know what has happened. If we can be of some help in any way, my lord. It seems I am to have a visitor tomorrow. Lady Fauntleroy is arriving on the midday train. Very good, my lord. Will her ladyship be staying the night? I assume she'll be here for luncheon. I don't know, Mrs. Mullen. I simply don't know. I will make the necessary preparations, my lord. Will that be all? I think it better if Lord... If Master Cedric goes down to Court Lodge in the morning, he can have luncheon with Mrs. Errol. Lou will send down to tell her. Do you understand I wish the boy to be as little troubled as possible? Roberts can take Master Cedric down before he goes for the train. Good. I just don't want him to be unhappy. That's another letter you're writing. I never knew a boy like you for writing letters. It's New York again, I suppose. I have to let them know I'm not a lord anymore. Mr. Hobbs will be pleased, I think. He doesn't take a kindly view of lords. He won't be so pleased. Not if what you've told me of him is true. Well, pleased or not, he ought to know. And Dick, too. Dawson, what's going to happen? I think I have to go back to live with Dearest. But what happens then? Do we stay there? Or do we have to go away altogether? Bless you, child. I don't know. I shouldn't mind living in the village. But I should be sad if I had to leave Grandfather. I think he might miss me. And I should certainly miss him. And I'd miss you too, Dawson. I really would, you know. Farnsworth and the butler here. Oh, really? Come on, Darcy. Oh, uh, can I stay here, Mom? I'm tired. Oh, just get moving. Lady Fortroy has arrived, my lord. She's brought her son with her, and Mr. Farnsworth has shown them into the drawing room. Very well, Thomas. I'll join them directly. Well, here we are. Here you are indeed. Come on, Darcy. I don't want to, Mom. Who cares what you want? Now just get over here and stop sniveling. I guess we wanted to meet you, grandson. Oh, what should I call you? Lord Dorincourt will be quite sufficient, Lady Fauntleroy. Very well, Lord Dorincourt. May I present you the real Lord Fauntleroy? Lady Fauntleroy, you requested this interview, and on Mr. Havisham's advice, I have granted it. Perhaps, now that you're here, you will tell me what it is that you will come to say. Oh, it's gloves off, is it? Very well. You'll find I can talk straight. So, let's be quite clear. I've come to tell you that Darcy and I are coming to live with you. That is quite out of the question. People are always telling you that. We will take up residence here. During the season, I will live in Doringcourt House in Grosvenor Square. You will make me an allowance. And before I leave today, I will inspect my rooms. What on earth makes you think that I will agree to any of this? I'll tell you. If you refuse me, I will sell my story for worldwide publication. I will reveal everything I know about the Errol family, which it will not surprise you to hear is quite a lot. Your son, my husband, not being noted for his discretion when drunk. I will pose for photographs, and I will not rest while there is a single secret of the House of Dorincourt left unpublished. It may surprise you to know that there's an audience for these revelations about a great family, but I can assure you that there is. However, I'm sure there's no need for any of that. You'll find me most accommodating. I mean to be in London quite a bit once things are settled. Well, then you'll have a chance to get to know your grandson. What'd you say? Madam, I'm speechless. Well, maybe that's best until you've spoken to Havisham. Will you ring for the housekeeper? I'm feeling kind of hungry. And then after I've eaten, I'll take a look around. By the way, where's the other boy? In the village with his mother. 
Oh, yeah. I heard about her. What a sad. Well, there'll be no hiding me away in the village. You can be sure of that. I guess she spoiled you, huh? Yes. I suppose she has. Ah, uh, Thomas. Tell Mrs. Mellon that Lady Fontaroy is ready for her luncheon. What are you going to do with yourself this afternoon? I don't know. I guess maybe I'll go up to the castle. I wonder if she's still there. She? And who's she? The cat's mother? No. <laughs> you know, my uncle's wife. The mother of the new guy. So, what are you doing? What does it look like? Can I help? We've just about finished, but do ask again whenever you want to. I guess I will be able to help a bit more. You know, when I'll be here all the time. And we'll be glad of it, won't we, Mary? It'll be nice having a man around the house. Well, I think I'll get going, if that's all right. Of course it is, as long as your mother doesn't mind. Go and say goodbye to her now. Okay. See you both tomorrow. I don't know which I'm sorry is that. That he had to live up at the castle away from his ma, or that he has to come back here now. Life can be wicked sometimes. Mine was last done up. It was decorated for the late Countess on her marriage to his lordship. Yeah? It smells as if she died here. Oh, well, I'll have to go. I'll get someone down from London for ideas. As you wish. When is your ladyship expecting to take up residence? Oh, not for a couple of weeks. I'll let you know. But don't worry, you don't have to have it finished by then. Just clean it up a little. Now, show me the nursery. Come on, Darcy. I expect the curious downstairs. My lady? Now that you've met the real Lord Fauntleroy. This way, my lady. should he be? It's all his now. Beg pardon, my lady, but these things belong to Master Cedric. Really? Well, Master Cedric will have to clear them out, won't he? This is going to be my son's room. Isn't it precious? Master Cedric, you're back sooner than I thought. I told Robert I didn't to... wait for Robert. I walked. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, this is your aunt, Lady Fauntleroy, and your cousin. Lord Fauntleroy. Cousin Darcy, I hope we'll be friends. I don't know there'll be much chance of that. You're not planning to stick around, are you? I don't think things are quite decided just yet. Well, I better get decided, and quick. Is this yours? Yes. Can I have it? I suppose so. Thanks. Well, that about does it. We'd better be going. I'll let you know my orders, Mrs. Mellon. Come on, Darcy. It's well come up. Do you know, Mrs. Dawson, I felt sorry for him. I did, truly. And I never thought I'd say that. They'll be coming here to live, then. Well, that's what I was saying downstairs. Though it beats me how Mrs. Errol, who never said a cross word, was left to stew in the village, and this one's been given the old countess's rooms. I don't know. How old's the boy? Do you know? Eleven, I think she said. Hmm. So what happens to our lad now? Blessed if I know. Poor kid. I was the grandchild of an earl and ought to live in Court Lodge. Yeah. Now, you better get on with these, or you'll have other troubles to worry about. Well, Sadie, how do you feel about it all? I feel pretty odd to tell you the truth, Grandfather. Will they take Dearest House away from her? Nope. They can take nothing away from her. Can't they? No, my boy. Not yet, at any rate. Still, I guess it means that everything's going to be different from now on. I'm afraid some things will have to be a bit different. 
Yes. I just wish it could all have stayed as it was. So do I, Sadie. Oh, so do I. I suppose this Darcy, he will have to be your boy now. As I've been. Won't he? No, he will not. Won't he? Hmm. Then shall I be your boy? Just like before? My boy? Yes. You'll be my boy as long as I live. Don't you worry about that. Oh, well then. I don't care about the Earl part. Really. But I thought we weren't going to be such friends anymore. Don't you worry, Sally. I'll look after you. I promise you that. I'll give you everything I can. I'll be leaving here, won't I? Well, leaving the castle. That lady said my room isn't my room anymore. Did she, my God? Are you all right, sir? Is it your foot? Would you like to lean on me? No, no, it's not too bad. Anyway, I'm afraid I must get used to managing without you. Don't say that, sir. It's just, if she... If they're going to live here, I think I'd rather be with Dearest. If it's all the same to you, I'm sure they're nice and everything, but I think I'd be better off in the village, and I know Dearest feels the same. I expect you will be, Sadie. Yes, I expect you will be. Listen to this. Dear Mr. Hobbs and Dick, I cannot write a long letter this time, but I just wanted to let you know that it's all a mistake. I am not a lord anymore, and I shall not have to be an earl. What? Wait a minute, there's more. There is a lady which was married to my Uncle Darcy, and her son is now Lord Fauntleroy, not me. I am not rich now, as when your papa is the youngest son, he is not rich, so I'll have to work. My grandfather is pretty angry at everything, but there it is. I thought you'd be interested and glad that I ain't an aristocrat. Your old friend, Cedric Errol. Not Lord Fauntleroy. Poor old Ceddie. They're trying to rob him. That's what they're doing. They're trying to rob him because he's an American. They've had their fight against us since the revolution. Now they're trying to take it out on him. So you're not glad that he won't be a lord? I mean, I'm not. I don't like him. But if people have to be lords, I reckon our city's as good as anyone. Ma'am. You have a visitor, ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's Lord Darren Court himself, ma'am. He's in the drawing room. Thank you, Mary. People say so. You know why I've come? Yes, Mr. Havisham's written to me. I shall defend your son with all the power of the law. He must have nothing that is not his by right, even if the law can give it to him. That outrageous woman and her child. Perhaps she cares for him as I do Cedric. And if she was your eldest son's wife, then her boy is Lord Fauntleroy and mine is not. I suppose you would prefer that Cedric should not be the Earl of Dorincourt. How foolish you must think me. It is a magnificent thing to be the Earl of Dorincourt. I know that. But I care most that he should be what his father was, brave and just and true. In striking contrast to his grandfather, eh? I haven't had the pleasure of knowing his grandfather. But I know that my little boy believes it. I know that Seti loves you. I have been a great fool, madam. Now I am miserable and wretched. And it is because of my misery and wretchedness that I come to you. The truth is, you are like the boy. And he cares for you. And I care for him. Treat me as well as you can, for his sake. I wish you would sit down. He's to move down to the village tomorrow. I heard Mrs. Mellon telling Mrs. Dawson to pack his things. There's no harm in that. He should never have been taken from her, poor little mother. Well, we won't have it so easy with the new one. Did you see him? I did, a right little devil. 
Still rather him than his mother. Who's going to meet her? Seeing Zoe. <laughs> look, everyone, look at this. Well, I never. Silly cow. I think she looks quite small. Huh. What's all this? I'll take it. Well, are you going to waste the whole evening on this rubbish? She'll catch you, isn't she? No, we don't care if she does. Keep still. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. It's strange how things work out, isn't it? Tonight, I'm looking at Dearest Cannon. And tomorrow, I'll be down there. And maybe I'll be looking up at the castle. You'll be glad to be back with your mother. And she'll be glad to have you, that's certain. I know. But it's still strange, isn't it? Well, life is strange. Come on, into bed. You know, Dawson, I'd be very happy here with Grandfather and all of you. Happier than I thought it would be when I first came here. And we've been very happy to have you. You can be sure of that. Will you tell your mother I said so? Well, good night, sweet dreams. I beg your pardon, my lord, but they were reading this downstairs and I thought you might care to see it. There's an article in it about Lady Fauntleroy. Well, there's no harm in it. A fashion piece, really. But I thought you ought to see it. A servant's hall paper. I trust I can spare it. Thank you, Mrs. Lowe. Is there something else, Mrs. Lowe? Only, only that we're very sorry below stairs that Master Cedric is leaving us. That's all, my lord. Thank you, Mrs. Mellon. Thank you. You've been very kind. Master Cedric has made us all kind, my lord. That's what Dawson says. And I think she's right. Wait a minute. Wait. It's poor little Seddy. What? Oh, never mind, never mind. I just got to show that to a friend of mine. Oh. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, you can pay me next week. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Hello, thank you for coming in. But I... Goodbye now. Goodbye. Nick, Nick, come here. They've gone and got it. No doubt about it. Get in here, boy. What is it? Look at that. In print. They've robbed our boy, and now they're going to send him packing. I think it's a shame, Mr. Hobbs. I do, truly. Do you want to see it? Ain't no point in that, Mr. Hobbs. You just tell me what it says. There's a picture of Seti if you want to look at that. Wait a minute, Mr. Hobbs. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. 